Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel for some more Escape from Tarkov. In today's video, we are talking about the revolvers that were just added to the game in patch 12.12. And I'm gonna give you guys my impressions on the weapons that were added and the 357 round in general. There are currently three types of Chiapa Rhino revolvers you can purchase in the game. The first being a 357 tactical that can be bought from Skier for 34,000 rubles. The main differences with the tactical is it has a black finish, it comes with a laser tactical device, and it has fiber optic iron sights. And unfortunately, as of patch 12.12, it cannot be fitted with a red dot. There is a lot of people assuming that it could be, but that is currently not the case. Next up is the standard version of the 357 Rhino Revolver, and this can be purchased from Jaeger for 14,000 rubles. And it's interesting to note that this is a standard price for sidearms in Tarkov, so it is very comparable to other weapons like the P226, the Glock, and others. And last, you can purchase the Snub Nose Rhino that shoots a 9x19 round. It's available at level 1 Jaeger and is the only weapon in Escape from Tarkov that takes up a single slot, allowing you to fit it in your pockets. With the introduction of the Chiapa Revolver, it also means that we have 357 ammunition variants. These are FMJ, which has a 70 damage output and 32 penetration power, hollow points with 90 damage and 15 penetration power, JHP with 88 damage and 22 penetration power, and soft points with 80 damage and 12 penetration power. So for the most part in Tarkov, there are three main ways of eliminating players. The first being headshots, then thorax shots, and then finally leg shots. And this is important to understand because this is going to show how the revolver can be best used and how it possibly falls short when compared to other pistols and sidearms. Another thing that's unique to revolvers, including the revolver shotgun in Tarkov, is that it features a double and single action firing mode. To put it simply, double action, you're able to fire the weapon more quickly but at the cost of accuracy, and single action, you maintain the weapon's accuracy but your rate of fire is reduced. If you're going to be running the revolver, then you're going to need to choose between these two modes situationally. After my attempts of running the Rhino today, I can tell you that double action, even though you can fire it much faster, is extremely inaccurate whenever you need it and it's not reliable. Single action is often too slow to kill enemies reliably, so this puts the revolver in a pretty tough position. Now let's talk a little bit about the ammunitions a bit more. There are two out of the four that are really standing out to me, the first being the FMJ round. The stats on this round are actually better than I expected them to be whenever I heard they were adding it to the game. This is the round that you're going to want to use if you're going to be trying to get headshots. The round is rated to go through class 3 helmets reliably with a lower chance of going through class 4 helmets and body armors. Since the round has 32 pen, it is the middle ground between class 3 and class 4, and usually these stats are actually decent enough for reliable budget rounds such as 762 by 39 ps which is probably one of the best and most used budget rounds in the game. But that being said, when shot from the Rhino, these rounds don't seem to do much damage to body armor at all, especially class 4s, 6B3 TMs, and some of the ceramics, and it's really leaving me a bit stumped. It's actually a situation where I feel the data doesn't really match up with how the bullet is performing, and that is either due to issues with the round itself being bugged, the round's velocity, hidden statistics, or the damage and pen drop-offs being more severe than what they should be. And we've seen this exact scenario play out already earlier in this wipe with 556, and it was eventually adjusted. To put it plainly, FMJ should be your go-to round, but even that has been struggling. The next round that's been standing out to me is the JHP rounds, and these actually have very unique statistics in the game. It has 88 damage, meaning it has the capability of one-tapping a thorax provided with 22 pen. So at point-blank range, you can one-shot a player with level 2 armor or lower with thorax shots, and there really isn't that many rounds in Tarkov that features similar capability, and that alone makes the round pretty intriguing. In theory, this makes this round a perfect post-wipe round when players are running around with low gear, but there's a bit of a catch. You need level 3 Jaeger to buy it, so naturally that takes it completely off the table for that strategy. 
Another thing that the JHP has is a 25% chance to apply a heavy bleed, which is similar to other hollow point rounds. So you could actually go for a mixture of leg shots and chest shots, or maybe even a lucky face tap. Even if I personally think it's a cool round because I'm sort of a Tarkov ammunition nerd, it still isn't very applicable in the game itself, directly comparing it to other pistols and weapons. The best use for this round is kind of like playing factory and hoping that all of your enemies are doing budget pistol runs or doing their pistol kill quests or eliminating pistol clip players whenever they're running for lead X's or even hunting scavengers. But even these days, scavs have class four body armor, making it relatively ineffective. The other two rounds, hollow points and soft points, don't really serve much of a purpose in my opinion. In Tarkov, hollow points or high damage rounds are typically used for leg meta strategies. You would need at least five rounds without a frag chance or bleed damage to kill a player with a six round cylinder weapon. So not really that great in my opinion. So to put it plainly, there are just better and faster options to get the job done with leg meta, which really takes hollow points and soft points off the table for me. After testing the weapon on the first day it was released, the best strategy that I had using the Rhino was just trying to hit my enemies directly in the face, which should say enough about the Rhino because nearly every single round in the game can kill your enemy with a single face shot. So that's setting the bar pretty low. And also something that I should mention, FMJ rounds to get Thorax kills should theoretically be possible if the ammunition functioned as well as the stats say it should. But in my limited testing so far, it isn't reliable. So I mentioned this during my broadcast and sitting here recording and thinking about the weapon a bit more, I kind of stand by it that I think I would rather a Makarov over the Chiapa revolver in almost every situation if I was fitted with the correct ammo. So PBM or PMM or SP7. So obviously there needs to be some balancing with the 357s. Now, as for the 9x19 version of the Chiapa, it functions identically to the 357, but it's snub nose and more inaccurate. This is purely a vanity weapon that has a cool trick of fitting it in a pocket slot. There are far better 9x19 sidearms in Tarkov in nearly every way. This gun is just to be used if you want to challenge, have some fun, or possibly humiliate your enemies. And I know I'm going to be seeing it in the comments, so I will mention it. Uh, there is one suggested use for this revolver, which is whenever you get a malfunction, it is significantly faster to switch to your sidearm when that happens, but you could also just take another sidearm that is equally priced and you'd probably have a better probability of survival. I mean, you could also have a sidearm for your sidearm by keeping it in your pockets if you're running 5.7s or SR1 MPs, but it is such a weird idea like it's 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 just it's not something that i could see players consistently using uh, other than for the memes now something to consider while watching this video is this is my experience using the weapon after the first few hours it hasn't even been 24 hours since it's been in the game and i did end up having fun with the gun when i was pairing it with other like wild west style loadouts like double barrel shotguns and revolver shotguns and role playing as a cowboy and a cool thing to mention, cowboy hats were running for 80,000 rubles today on the flea market. So a lot of other players are having similar ideas. Now, because I wasn't a big fan on how the Rhino was operating in the game, I'm gonna sit here in my armchair as a backseat developer, knowing pretty much nothing about how games are created and provide some suggestions on what I would do if I wanted to make the Chiapa a better weapon. The first thing would be immediately tighten up that MOA, making it the most accurate sidearm in the game, but not just by a little bit, but by a long shot, meaning it was the go-to accurate sidearm, maybe setting it as low as five MOA so it can fill that role for firing it slow, but landing your shots consistently. Because right now, I think the 5.7 takes the cake as the accurate sidearm, the reliably accurate sniping sidearm. So it would be cool if the Rhino could fit that void a little bit. I would also increase the FMJ penetration rating from 32 to 35. I would increase the hollow point and soft point damage significantly, like probably well over 100. 
I would also increase the JHP penetration rate to 25 up from 22 and the damage to at least 90, maybe even 92 up from 88. I think there is hope for the Chiapa Rhino with some adjustments and some balancing uh, to have an actual purpose in Tarkov, but currently it just falls short in so many categories. It's just sadly too unreliable to trust in using in nearly every situation. But with all that being said, I will be uploading some cool PVP moments using the Rhino because I was able to get a couple and I'm also going to be building some Wild West style loadouts featuring things like double barrels and the revolvers and getting into some wacky PVP moments that I'm going to be sharing here on YouTube. And I know this is going to happen because I already had some really cool moments while running it. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. So subscribe here for more Escape for Tarkov YouTube videos. Make sure you hit the subscription button and the notification bell. I know it's been years of YouTubers telling you to hit that freaking notification bell. And I really haven't been doing that, but I understand the reason why. Sometimes my videos will just not get sent to your subscription feeds if you don't hit the bell. So if you are a fan of my content, please do hit that bell. And then also something to mention, I stream Monday through Friday starting at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, not just Tarkov, but other variety games as well. And lastly, you can expect YouTube videos here Monday through Friday around noon Eastern Standard Time. So if you're wondering when I'm gonna be uploading videos, that is around the time that I will be. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video and enjoy the rest of your day.